Welcome to PHTV Channel 4 in Palis Heights. I'm Sue Jankowski, and today we're around Palis. And I think uh, our good friend here today, Jill Moss Stetson, who comes to us from Skim Trust, should be familiar to you by now, I hope at least. Jill, it's great to see you again. Always good to see you, Sue. Good to be here. Well, you know, it's really great because Jill comes in and gives us great tips on skin care, and she's so knowledgeable. And I, I know that you have watched the program before, and you've got some really great information from her. I know I always do. And so when we're changing, you know, it's, it's the beginning of spring, we're going into summer, and um, it, you've got to take good care of your skin. And no matter what age you are, we have learned over the months that we have uh, visited with Jill. And she's here today to tell us... Um, some great ideas and how to make sure our skin stays healthy, really. Yes. It's healthy. And not only healthy, but, you know, we all want to look good. Yeah. So we're going to get some great tips for that. So I guess the first thing is, um, you know, do, what do people do to care for their skin on a daily basis? I mean, it's just kind of like some people just kind of wash their face. Some people are like spending hours with potions and lotions. What is the right thing to do? Well, you started it out very correctly, and that is um, cleansing your skin. I think that um, it's really important to care for your skin because when you think about what you do at home, if you care for your skin in the morning and night, 365 days a year, that's a lot of care for your skin. So you want to make sure that you're using the right products, that you're using the right ingredients for the concerns that you have about your skin, and you're doing them in the right order. So I always take a lot of time to help people. And an example would be, do I put a serum on before my moisturizer, or do I put my moisturizer on first? And that is a puzzle for everybody. It it's it like you've be a got these for... things and you're like, well... What is it I do again? <laughs> I think we need a little note about it. Well, and many people do because products, there's a lot that you can do. I try to keep things very simple for people, but that still can be overwhelming too. So if you look at what you do, starting with the morning, you want to cleanse your skin, and now we're changing seasons. So I always say for people that have maybe drier skin or more mature skin, in the morning just use a hydrating toner on your skin and not cleansing when it's winter. But now that we're going into summer, use a cleanser on your skin. Then follow that directly with the serum. Serums have a higher concentration of ingredients, so you want that right next to your skin. And then as we go into the summer, really just a sunscreen over that will suffice. And then you want to put an eye cream on. Um, if you're in your late 20s and forward, you want to wear an eye cream, and that should really take care of it for you. And one tip that I have for people is make sure that your products you use on your face, you bring them down to your neck and to your chest or decollete area, and it's also good to put on our hands. We forget about our hands. Well, that is definitely true, too. I do that, too. But um, now let's talk about some of these products that you're talking about because, you know, a toner, what does it do for us? A serum, like what is it? Is it a vitamin? Is uh, You know, I see, you know, you go into any of these places where there's vitamin C, vitamin E, this oil, that thing. What do we use to make this all <laughs> make is, sense? It is a very good, you've got many questions in there, so they're all very good. I, the toner has to have a special reason for you to, for you to use it because it's an extra step. It used to be years ago that skincare lines had a toner and a, they had a cleanser and a toner that came together because the toner brought the pH of your skin back to normal. The, the cleansers are really balanced now for pH, so you don't really need that toner. Unless, like I said, you want a toner because you want to use it as your cleanse in the morning hydrating. Maybe you have um, combo skin, so you have T-zone oil, but you're drier out here. Then you would use a, a toner that's specifically for oil. A lot of times it might have salicylic acid in it, it might have glycolic acid in it, and you use it just on your on your um, T-zone after you cleanse. But to me, to add an extra step, there has to be a reason for it. And the products are sophisticated. They aren't what they were 30, 25 years ago. 
And then you said serum. So let me let me remember this. You said okay. serum. That's right. Is you that, can have all mm -hmm. kinds of serums out there. Vitamin C is certainly one. Hyaluronic acid or moisturizing serums are another. It depends upon what you want to do with your skin. There are serums that have peptides in them that firm our skin. Those are the kinds of serums that you would have. But the good thing about a serum is it has a lower molecular weight, a high concentration or a higher concentration of the ingredients. So you want those to be able to have the ability to really work down into the epidermis. Okay. And so you put, you do that, and then after that you put on your, your uh, skin protection, meaning a sunscreen or a moisturizer or both. Or both. Winter time you need both, and so we're still on daytime. Winter not winter time you need both. You need to add a moisturizer, and then you put your sunscreen on top of that. Summer is much more forgiving. The the humidity levels are higher, so you don't need your your that when that humidity is higher, you don't need that moisturizing protection that you do when. We are in winter and the furnace is grabbing our moisture out of our skin and the wind is hitting us and our face. It's much different. So you don't need that. Right now we're in a transition. So what I say to people is you might want to take just a dab of your moisturizer and put it in your sunscreen and that should suffice instead of a whole layer of moisturizer on oh, our skin. Okay. So we have two seasons here, summer and winter. We transition with those seasons. We obviously, after this week, are in a big transitional cycle. Right, a absolutely. So would you say then that, you know, you see products that say um, sunblock and moisturizer that you can purchase that way. Is it better to take your own moisturizer, mix it a little yourself with the sunscreen that you're using and use, use it that way? Is that better? For right now, I think it's better as you transition. So you go through a couple months of our spring where we're bouncing all around, but we're not as cold as we were in the winter. That's what I would do. I would take the moisturizer I was using in the winter, and so instead of putting a whole layer, I put a dab of it into my sunscreen just for that little extra moisture and protection, mm -hmm. but not at the same level that you need in the winter time. Okay, well that's good to know too. So. Um, this is what we're we're talking about the 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 products and the order in which you would do them. So when you're talking about that's your daytime, you're waking daytime. up and you're doing the daytime. That's your daytime. But your nighttime is a whole different thing, right? Yes, it is yeah. because it, there's really a, there's a premise that I really like to educate people on, and that is you protect in the day and you treat at night. So at nighttime we're sleeping, our body's going re through restorative work all over. So our DNA is repairing itself, and that's when you want to use your treatment products. So you would do a double cleanse at night. So in the morning you just do a cleanse or you do a toner, but at night you want to do a double cleanse. You want to remove makeup and toxins. And even if you don't wear makeup, you want to get the toxins from the environment off of your skin. And then you want to really clean your skin. And you want to use a cleanser that's very appropriate for your skin. So you can maybe use an oil-based cleanser to take your makeup off. Then you use maybe a creamy cleanser to s clean your skin. And again, it depends on what your skin type is. Somebody with breakout prone skin would want to use a gel based cleanser. And they, they can still use an oil based cleanser to re remove their makeup, but then they want a gel based cleanser that's going to really clean their skin. So nighttime is important to do that. People don't realize it, but um, if you go to bed with your makeup on or you go to bed with your skin not clean, over time, you can cause premature aging with your skin. Okay, that's important. We don't want to. No, we don't want to do anything. Anyway, we don't want to <laughs> prematurely age. No, we don't want to prematurely. We don't want to help that process along. No, we don't. We want to stop it. Yeah. But it is really important. And I'll see people that um, they don't, we, we all get so tired. We do, yeah, and then all of a sudden it's like 9.30, it's 10 o'clock, and you're like, oh, I just don't want to do that. I don't want to do it. Yeah. So I always encourage people, do it maybe right after dinner. Do it before you sit down to really enjoy television for the night or reading or whatever you're doing. But don't wait until right before bed because we are all so tired. So I understand that very, very much. But it's imperative that you do that because not only can you cause premature aging, you can get whiteheads on your skin. I can see the effects on someone's skin if they haven't done it on a regular basis. And then 
By skipping that, you're not getting the restorative uh, benefits of sleep, where you can use a treatment product. So that mm -hmm. means you may use a serum that has a peptide in it, so you use that right after you cleanse your skin. You may use a serum that has hyaluronic acid because you just want more moisture in your skin. The older we get, the, the, the impact of hormones, we lose moisture in our skin. And then you put a treatment product, like a, um, a, a moisturizing cream, you might use a retinol product at night. Um, those are the kinds of things that then you put on your skin. Okay, so that's very, very important to do. You know, I, I was just this, you know, thinking about people um, in the past, and even now some people do wash their face with soap and water. Now that is probably too harsh for your skin, yes, I'm guessing. It is. Even the most mild of soaps. Even the and most mild washcloth. of soaps. You know, yes. but maybe that's good because you're kind of exfoliating. Well, a there is there is some yeah. truth to that, but you don't want you have to use a clean washcloth every time you do it though, because you don't want any bacteria to settle in and then you put it back on your skin. Oh yeah, right. But you are absolutely right about soap. It will it's harsh on your skin because on this the pH scale, skin is more down in the acidy area. And when you use bar soap, you take it all the way up to the alkaline level, and that's not where you want your skin to be. And just like I say, winter terrorizes your skin, soap terrorizes your skin. Okay. So Long-term use of it does. Don't try not to do that. That's try not, not to use not it. not a good thing to no, do. No, you really want to use a cleanser. Mm -hmm. And even it can be really harsh on your body skin, too. Yeah. Um, it just is it's harsh. And it's much better to get some type of body cleanser um, and then use a facial cleanser too. Because our face skin is very different than our body skin. And even on our face, the, the area under our eyes or our neck is very different than the face. Yeah. And you don't realize those things. No. And the hands too. I mean, oh, yes. as the older you get, the thinner your skin uh, gets. And that's kind of, you, you want to be gentle with that too. You do. Absolutely. Yeah. And put that sunscreen on Absolutely. it too. Absolutely. Um, okay, so um, I was going to throw in this other thing. I was watching something on TV and they were talking about skin care. Mm -hmm. And they were talking about men's skin. Mm -hmm. And it's not the same as women's skin, no, according no. to what they were saying. And they were correct. Yeah, so I mean, they would need to do something, but maybe not those things that you're talking about, toners and all of that. I, moisturizers, I don't know. Well, in the winter time, they may want to use a moisturizer. But like all of us, I, a, a man should also be wearing an SPF every day. He should cleanse his skin morning and night. And then um, they may not do all the, the serums and the treatment products, but they do need to do the basics, which is cleansing your skin morning and night, wearing an SPF during the day or a sunscreen, and really a moisturizer at night. Now, a man's skin can be very different because their oil is different in their skin, and they may produce, they produce perhaps more oil, a different type of oil, a thicker oil than what a woman does. So it does depend upon their skin, but a lot of times you control that through the kind of cleanser. So should they use more of a salicylic, salicylic cleanser? And salicylic acid is very good to take oil out of the skin. They could do that. So again, they have different skin types. Like we, on the woman's side, have different skin types. Right, right. Okay. But, they, but the basics are important for them, too. Okay. Just they, they can they don't have to be as elaborate about it. They may not. No. They may not want to be as elaborate, but their skin ages just like everyone else's, and they need to protect the health of their skin by using a sunscreen. That's important, and that's for health reasons. It's that very is true. important. Yeah, and also, you know, they're a little more exposed with their hairstyle. Most men have shorter hair. Yeah. So they're, all their neck and all of that is more exposed. Well, and, and that's such a good point, Sue, because the ears, that is a common area for a man to get skin cancer. Yeah, they've been out in the sun forever. And if and you're wearing a baseball cap, that doesn't help either. No, and you probably forget about your ears to put the sunscreen on, but that's a very common area, unfortunately, for men to get sun, sun yeah, cancer. Yeah, so protect, protect yourself, protect your ears. Yes. Okay, so now, um, what is skin cycling? A four-day cycle using different products? Okay, uh, now we, we know what the products are and the order in which to use them, but how do we cycle through this? Well, it's a very interesting concept that was developed by a, doctor, a dermatologist in New York, and it's made headlines in the skincare world, as many things do. But I think 
it's a very logical way to care for your skin. So we talked about nighttime. You want to use your treatment products at night. We're doing our restorative time. Um, and we're doing our bodies doing your restorative work. But sometimes treatment products can also be harsh on our skin. And our skin, just like our bodies, need nourishment. So what a good psych skin cycling program is, is to use a retinol product. Retinol is a, a, the, the hero ingredient of skin care. And there's many formulations of that out there, which we can talk about. But use a retinol product one to two nights, then skip a night and use a nourishing product. And then maybe the next night use a nourishing mask and then go back to the retinol. You may find that your skin, and this is, this is, a, a, this is a, a strategy to use, especially if you're just trying to maintain good skin. You're not really working on an issue, but you just really want to help your skin age beautifully. Then that's a good way to do it. So you use nourishment and then you use your treatment product. And I structure it based on the person. So we can say, you know, treatment product two nights, off two nights. That's a general rule. And then I help people by structuring it relative to what else they're doing to their skin and the type of skin that they have. But I think it's a great concept and it's catching on. I personally have started to use it too because I think if you just treat, treat, treat with some harshness all the time, that's not always good for your skin either. And I can see it when people come in that they've just resurfaced their skin too much. They're using too much on their skin and we need to pull it back because our bodies need nourishment. Mm -hmm. They need to be treated, but they need nourishment too. Okay, so if you're using a retinol type of product, uh, it's just kind of like straight retinol. You would buy retinol and use that for two, a couple of nights. Well, I wish the world was that simple. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you're here, oh, Jill, to explain that. There's all <laughs> kinds of retinoid products, and really the term is a retinoid. We tend to use a retinol yeah. interchangeably with that. You can get a prescription-grade retinol. You can get um, a medical-grade retinol. You can get an over-the-counter product that has maybe a retinoid um, acetate in it, which is a form of a retinol. So there's all kinds of different formulations, concentrations, carrier systems in them. So you have to be careful. And I think what happens is people don't understand the type of product they put on their skin and all of a sudden, whoa, they get this reaction where you have to transition into a retinol. It's a fabulous ingredient to use on your skin. You know, it will plump your skin. It will soften fine lines. It stimulates collagen. And it is a hero. In skincare, we call it the hero because it's the most powerful as long as you use a formulation that's right for you. Okay, so. How do we get the formulation that's right? We need to see someone like you. You need to work with somebody who or understands that. Or the dermatologist that. or something. That's right. Because how would we know? That's right. And you don't know. And then, you know, it gets into the whole discussion of different types of products. And you could buy an over-the-counter product that says it has it in it. And they're mm -hmm. right, it does, but they don't have much of it in it. Or you can get a retinol, which is um, a higher level that maybe has too much in it. So it does, get, it does get a little complicated. And I don't want to get too scientific about it, but what happens is, based on the formulation, it's how your skin breaks it down. And that sometimes can cause the irritation or not. But there's wonderful products out there. There's some that aren't quite so good, but there's wonderful products out there. And I think really, unless you're really treating something like acne scarring, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, those are really good products to get from your dermatologist. And then there's some over-the-counter products that have a retinol in it, but they're not, it's not very good. There's a lot in between that are wonderful. And it's just a matter of working with somebody who understands your skin and can, can coach you and can help you get to the, the right, right product one. because you don't want to spend the money. Correct. It's, it's not, you know, it's not got, inexpensive. It, no, it's got some uh, price points to it. And you want to do yourself well, so you really need to get the right product. And so finding out by getting to the professionals, I think, is, the, is certainly the way to do it. I think a lot of us may end up at a... Uh, a store that sells a lot of different products and then some person there is helping us but that person doesn't have really the uh, uh, information that maybe you need. So, and, and that's absolutely right. And I've seen it where someone's come in, they've had irritation, they say, I can't use it anymore. To the opposite scenario, if I'm using a retinol product, it's really not doing anything for my skin, but there's not much in it. Yeah. So, so it, it's, it's everything out there. So it's a matter of, you know, uh, because it is such a wonderful ingredient, how do you find that right formulation for you? Right. And if you're going to spend the money and time and effort, 
You want to do it th get the right thing. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so then you're using the retinoids in this four-day cycle, and then you're using a nourishing. What would the nourishing part of that be? Uh, what would that be? I think it could be two things. It can be a nourishing moisturizer okay. and one that just has some very good ingredients in it and probably have some, um, um, it could have some shea butter in it, it could have some hyaluronic acid in it, but it's a lovely moisturizer you use, or a mask. There's wonderful overnight mask products out there that are available now. Most of them are a basis of hyaluronic acid, so you could put a peptide serum under it, you put the mask over it, and it just, oh, it feels so good. When Wait, you <laughs> so you're putting something on and then you're wearing this mask to that? Well, it's what a is, cream. Oh. It's a cream that you put on that's a mask. But it's not a thing. No, it's, it's just, not a oh, thing. Okay. I'm it's picturing, just, you know, <laughs> it's a <laughs> tiger. Tiger. <laughs> It's just, it's a mask that you put on that's a cream. But oh, when you get up in the morning, your skin feels so good. Oh, I bet. Yeah. Okay. So something like that. Again, is this best for us to go to a professional for that? Or we can go in a, you know, a store that sells that type of products and get something that's nourishing. I think for that you could do either. Okay. I think you could do either. Okay. I'm just trying to figure out how do we get these things yes. that yes. are good for us. I think with a nourishing product, it's it, it's not going to cause irritation that perhaps a retinol could or a vitamin C could. So I think those you can probably go into a store that maybe sells a lot of skincare products and find something that's good. Okay. That's good to know. Now, there are people, friends, who look at themselves and they think, I probably should do some Botox. Now they never have. And then they, they think, oh, should I? Or, you know, am I gonna be the person who can't talk because of all the <laughs> Botox, you know? So, well, nobody wants that. <laughs> nobody does, I can't smile, I can't talk. So what, what would be the reason, I mean, I know the reason you would want some bo uh, bo Botox, but, um, who should get that and where do you go and what's too much and when would you start doing that? Well, those are all very good questions. And we have 20 years of experience now with Botox, so we're, we're learning a lot. Um, and I have personal opinions about Botox working in the industry. And I'm not opposed to it. We sell it at Skin Trust. I use a little bit around my eyes occasionally, so I'm not opposed to it. But I think there's a time and place for it. One, if you have it done, you want to make sure that the person doing it, that's all they do are injections. Not a, oh, I do this and I'll do an injection on the side. No, you don't want that when somebody is going to be injecting into your face. Two, I think Botox is for the women over 40, maybe 35. And the reason I say that is we, we have 20 years of experience, which is some, but it's still not a lot, in terms of what are the long-term effects of Botox. Mm. And what we have seen, and what's happened now is that we have seen that 20 years of experience in Botox, more than that, you could atrophy a muscle in your face. Oh. Now, I'm not saying everyone will, but it has happened. And so now the literature is starting to come out to say Botox is good, but but really for the woman over 40, somebody who is starting an aging process, somebody who wants to soften the fine lines. And you know, most places that Botox is used is around the eyes and the forehead, mm -hmm. and maybe a little bit over the lip area. Um, those are the primary places where Botox is used. But you just have to be careful. If you're 20, 25, 30, you start to use it, you're gonna use it for, what, 35 Forever? years? Yes. I'm dubious thing. of that. Yeah. I'm very doubtful of that. And I will get clients to come in and ask me. And I say, I just don't think it's, I, don't, I wouldn't start it young. I just wouldn't do it. And especially if there is a chance that you could atrophy a muscle in your face. Yeah, that wouldn't be I wouldn't. Good. I wouldn't do no, that. Take the risk, no. But I think it is something for the woman over 40 that's starting to see issues relative to their age. What's happened is there's a philosophy out there that's been spurred by the manufacturer to say, well, don't treat fine lines. Use it early to prevent fine lines. Oh, I see. And I just philosophically don't agree with that. Yeah, right. I understand why they're doing it. Sure. But I just don't philosophically agree with that because I, I just think it could be harmful to people over time. I, and I'm just conservative. Well, and I, in some ways I understand with people younger saying, if I do that, I won't look, you know, my aging will slow down or I'll, I'll look great. But then on the other hand, you know, when you look back at pictures of yourself when you're in your 20s and 30s, you're like, 
Yeah, I look good. <laughs> well, I, I remember I when, when, I, it. when I was in my <laughs> late 20s, I started to get fine lines around here. Those are my expression lines. So I started to wear an eye cream. And I suggest for young gals, and they ask me the question about Botox, I say, well, what are you using in your eye area? Start with a good eye cream. And it will soften. It's not going to take them away, but it will soften the fine lines. And do that, and then we'll talk in five years or so. But I think that's a better way to do it. I just, I worry. And there's, there's interesting research that's come out, too. There was a study done in, in um, the United Kingdom about Botox. And they're saying that, why is a 20-some-year-old, would you want to use Botox when you freeze all your expression lines? <laughs> right. So in essence, you're freezing your, the way you're expressing your personality. Right. right. And so I think that those are some things to think about. And that's when I've seen people with too much Botox and they're, they have no ability to have an expression on their face. And, you, and so, yeah, and that's our personality. It, right. Is it we is. use our faces to express our personality. Right. right. And then when you don't have, and nobody wants that frozen look. No. Nobody, nobody wants <laughs> no. it. But some people do get it. And there's other, there's other side effects. You have to be very careful. I won't get, into all, get into all of them today. But you have to be careful about Botox. And Go you into have it to, carefully. Yeah, yeah. And let people, let people know what those are. I, I'm just a firm believer. I'll provide as much education as I can for you to make the right decision for yourself. Okay. That's my personal opinion about Botox. Yeah. And when I have a young gal ask me, I do share it. Yeah, that's good. I mean, that's why they're coming to you and asking. Yeah. And, th and that's uh, good advice. Uh, okay, now before we go, we want to know what are some summer skin care tips that we should all be thinking about? I know, isn't that lovely we're going into summer? summer? The well, the one thing, <laughs> one thing we always say sunscreen every day, but the summertime, what gets us is you have to reapply every 90 minutes. That is no, tough. No sunscreen is good for more car. than 90 minutes. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but remember, too, that there, especially for a woman who has makeup on, you can use a powdered SPF. There are powder sunscreens out there that you can put over your makeup because nobody wants to take a cream cream sunscreen and put it over their makeup. So you have that out there. Um, and here's a little tidbit too. 10 minutes of exposure every day to sun over a period of time can damage you. So, you know, some people are like, well, I need to get my vitamin D, so I'll right. just That's have a little bit of sun. About that. Take a supplement. Take a supplement. Okay. Because over time, it is over time. It's probably over years, but it's still can be harsh on you. Okay. And when we're talking about sunscreen, don't forget we talked about the ears, and don't forget the tops of your feet or your hands. Oh yes, and I've gotten a burden on my feet before because you don't really think about that and it's just your feet. I know, but, I know. Yeah, that's not good, you can't put your shoes on. No, you can't, uh, no. no. And I think some of the other tip, tips are use a vitamin C, it's an antioxidant. That can enhance a sunscreen, it does not replace a sunscreen, but it really can enhance a sunscreen. Um, remember to exfoliate your skin once to twice a week, especially because um, you might be using more sunscreen than you normally do in the wintertime. You want to get that buildup off. If you want color, use a self-tanner. There's wonderful products out there. And, and they really work so well now. They do. Much, much better. Than the much, olden days when absolutely. you turned orange. You're, you're good and <laughs> if you tend to have oily skin, don't cleanse it too much. Humidity is going to go up. Oil production is going to go up, but don't strip your skin. What happens is an oily person thinks, I need to cleanse it more. Well, then you're going to overwork your oil glands by cleansing your skin too often. Okay. And then you just defeat everything. So you don't want to do that. And then there's really the basics. Stay hydrated. Keep um, exercising. That keeps your circulation going. Keeps your skin great. Get good rest. So the, and, and then... I talked about the vitamin C, the antioxidants, which really help us not have free radical damage, which causes premature aging. <laughs> um, do the vitamin C, vitamin C and E is a very good combination, but don't forget about food. Our, our strawberries, our blueberries, our avocados, our raspberries, they work hand, do the inside and do the outside. And the outside. And you mentioned uh, keep hydrated. You know, more and more we're realizing how much, you know, hydration 
is so important. And mm -hmm. now you see people walking around with water bottles. I always have one with I me. I do too. In the car or wherever so I can have a drink of water because I think in the past, you know, maybe 20 years ago or so, it wasn't really emphasized that much. You have a cup of coffee yeah. and, yeah. you know, a yeah. Coke and yeah. you're fine. But now we're really trying to, you know, push that water, especially in the summer months. It, and yeah. you really do need it in the summer yeah. months um, because of the heat. And it just gets toxins out of our, our body and that keeps our skin better. That does. Well, Jill, thank you so much. Oh, my pleasure, Sue. Always good to be here. You're always just a wonderful fountain of information for us to take to heart and really think about what we're doing with our skin care because, you know, we all want to look good and we all want healthy skin on top of it. So Absolutely. we want to take care of ourselves. And we will be back again in a few months. And uh, Jill and I were talking about some uh, things we can talk about later on when they we're on the crest of fall. Uh, but we won't think about that. We're going to think about summer because we're so happy we're just about there. Um, thanks for being here. Thank you, sir. Thanks for watching us today, and we will see you next time around Palos. Bye now.